Hello, in this video, we're going to cover 2.4, which A, which is a library of parent functions. So we'll be talking about different kinds of functions. The first two we'll talk about are linear and squaring functions or linear and quadratic functions. Then we'll have an example and talk a little bit more about those two. Um, and then we'll talk about cubic, square root, and reciprocal functions. And then the general parent functions, all of them, and then use that information to describe piecewise defined functions and then eventually get to our practice problems. Okay. So for linear and squaring functions, one of the goals of this text is to enable you to recognize the basic shapes of the graphs of different types of functions. For instance, you know that the graph of the linear function y equals mx plus b, as you learned it before, and now fancy notation f of x equals ax plus b, where a is the slope, um, and b is the y-intercept, okay? Now, the graph of linear function has the following characteristics. One, the domain of that kind of function is the set of all real numbers from negative infinity um, to infinity. And then we also know that m, the slope, cannot equal zero, okay? So, or when the slope does not equal zero, the range is the set of all real numbers, okay? So again, the range would be the set of all real numbers, but when the slope is equal to zero, um, the range is just that one value of the y-intercept. So it says the graph has an x-intercept at this value. You basically solve um, this equation. Okay, and if you're using m instead of a, you would minus b over, and then you would divide by m. And so you get this form of the solution right there. And then the y-intercept is always zero comma that y-intercept. Um, and when your the graph is gonna be increasing when the slope is positive, it's gonna be decreasing when the slope is negative. And then of course it will be constant when the slope is zero. Um, and so our first example says, write the linear function f for which f of one equals three and f of four equals zero. Um, the best thing to do is to put this in its point form where you know x and y, and the same for this one where you know x and y. So x is what's in the parentheses, and then when you plug x into the function, the output is the y value. This x value is four. When you plug four into the function, the output is the y value. So I have these two points here, which they've also written them down. They just labeled them. They called this one x1 and y1, and they called this one x2 and y2. And then from there, in order for you to write the equation or the function, you need to know a and you need to know b, okay? So we need to make our way in finding those two values. So the first thing they're gonna do is find a, which is the slope, okay? And you find that by doing this formula. So they plugged in y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And the calculations come up that that slope is um, negative one, which means my function will have a negative one in front of x or just negative x. But I still don't know what the y-intercept is, okay? So if you take and I don't suggest you do this also because the new 410 courses don't even teach that. So if you have this, oh, I know what A is. A was negative one, right? So I know what the A is, but I still need to figure out B. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take one of those points. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take X1, Y1, which was one comma three. And remember, this is the Y value, this is the X value. This is just a fancy way of saying Y. So this f of x becomes three and the x becomes one. And once you plug in that x and that y value, you can solve for this b. So you get three equals negative one plus b. And then if I add one to both sides, I get that four equals b. So my final function will be that negative x plus, and now I know what b is. And notice that I get the same exact answer as they did, okay? They used a whole nother uh, formula, but 
I don't want to get conditioned to using that formula to find B because I know that some of the incoming students um, may not have covered this in their 410 classes. So, and if I wanted to graph it, we would know that the watt intercept is at four. And since the slope is negative one, that can be written as negative one over one, which means I go down one and over one unit, down one over one unit, down one, down one over, and that will make the line. Okay. So continuing with linear and squaring functions, there are two special types of linear functions. One is called the constant function and the other one is called the identity function. The constant function has this form where it's f of x equals c, which is just a fancy way of saying y equals c, okay? And c can be any real number. Just if you have f of x equal to a number or y equal to a number, that is going to be your constant function. The identity function is f of x equal to x. And so what that is, is it's a, um, it's a line that has zero as the y-intercept, but the slope is one. So you go up one and over one to get the other points on the graph, okay? Um, but those two functions are pretty common. Now we talk about the squaring function where you have f of x equals x squared. Um, we know that from our quadratic section that's gonna create a U-shaped curve, okay? The domain is all real numbers, negative infinity to infinity. And then the range is the set of all non-negative real numbers, okay? Um, so that one's going to be a little bit tricky because you basically have to graph it in order for you to figure out what the range is. Because if the parabola is opening up, then the range is gonna be from whatever this y value is um, up to the positive infinity, okay? Um, but if it's opening downward, then basically you're gonna have negative infinity to that y value as your range. So you really do have to see which situation you have after you've graphed it, okay? Um, and then we both, we know that the function is even, right? X squared has an even power and the graph has an intercept at zero, zero, okay? My main thing about this section, about this function is that you remember that table, if you plug in negative two, negative one, zero, one, and two, um, if this is X squared, then when you square this, you get four. When you square this, you get one. When you square that, zero, one, and four. And then when you plot these points, you do end up getting the graph. This graph that they're showing you here, okay? Now it is decreasing. If it's facing upward, it will be decreasing on the left and then increasing on the right. Um, it is symmetric with respect to the y-axis, right? If I fold the paper over the y-axis as my fold, this will land on top of itself when I fold it. Um, and it does have a valley here, so it does have a minimum at this point. Now, the cubic square root and reciprocal functions. Um, the following summarizes the basic characteristics of the graphs of cubic square roots and reciprocals. So one, the graph of a cubic, um, f of x equals x cubed. Um, the domain is negative infinity to infinity. The range is negative infinity to infinity. This one has an odd power, so it's considered an odd function. And it does have um, an intercept at zero, zero. Again, if you create that table, this time y equals x cubed. If you plug in these zero, these values, you will get negative eight, negative one, zero, one, and eight. And if you draw this, um, if you were to continue that, four, five, six, seven, eight, you would have a point here at two and eight. Similarly down there, and you have these points here and here and here. Four, five, six, seven, eight. And so you have a point eventually down here somewhere. Okay. Um, also with that one. So you do have those same points. So it does create this uh, graph. Notice that from left to right, it's increasing the entire time. 
And then also this one is symmetrical with respect to the origin. I would have to do two folds. I would have to fold over my y axis and then fold over my x axis in order for this side to land on the other side. Now, the graph of the square root function has the following characteristics. The domain is the set of all non-negative numbers. So essentially your radicand has to be greater than or equal to zero. Um, the range depends on your exit. So whatever X values you can plug in, that will tell you what your range is going to be. Since my X's have to be zero or bigger, then I know that my Y values are definitely going to be zero or bigger too. Um, and then the graph has an intercept at zero, zero, and it's increasing from zero to infinity. And this time, if you try to make the chart, you have to be careful with this chart. One is I cannot plug in negative numbers. So I'll plug in zero and one, and you're gonna have to take the square root of these numbers. So I would pick numbers that were perfect squares, like four and um, nine. So then the square root of four is two and the square root of nine is three. So when you graph this, you'll have zero, zero, one, one, and then you'll have four and two. And it doesn't go as far as nine and three. Okay, but you could see how it's going in that direction. And that would give you your, um, your graphing point. Now, the reciprocal function is one over X. Okay, now this one has a domain of all real numbers except zero. Zero is gonna break up the negative infinity to infinity. And the range is the same, okay? Um, no matter what I plug in here for X, I cannot plug in a zero. And so that's where there's a break in the domain. And as close to zero as I may get, the larger this number is gonna be. And the bigger that this X is, the smaller this number is gonna be. But it will never quite be zero, which is why the range also has the value zero removed from negative infinity to infinity. This function does have an odd exponent of one in the denominator. Um, so it's an odd function. It does not have any intercepts, x-intercepts or y-intercepts. And this thing is decreasing on the entire domain, okay? It is symmetric with respect to the origin. So if I fold it over the one axis and then I fold it over the other axis, it should land on itself. And for this one, you can type in um, negative two, negative one, one and two. You just cannot type in zero because when you try to plug in zero in here, one divided by zero will just give you an error in the calculator. So here that would be negative one half, this would be negative one, one, and then one half. So here we have um, negative two and a half, um, negative one and negative one, and then one and one and two and a half. And then that should be enough for you to be able to draw those curves. Now the parent functions are these um, seven functions here, okay? Or it says eight, but I don't see eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's seven, not eight. Okay, so the seven graphs below show, um, they represent the most common functions used. So we have um, f of x equal to a constant, which just looks like a flat line. We have f of x equal to ax plus, or just x, no slope. This is the identity function, just x, okay? Then you have the quadratic, which is x squared. And then here, oh, actually this one's not that graph. This one's the absolute value of x. And then here, we've got the square root of x. And down here, we have x squared. Here, we have x cubed. And here, we have 1 over x. And so these are the basic functions. So what they want you to do is they want you to recognize that when you have f of x equal to a constant, the graph will look like a flat line. You just need to know what that constant is so you know where to draw that flat line. Um, also, 
for the linear equation, um, we do need to know the slope and the intercepts and all of that, but you need to know that it looks like a line. Now, whether the line is going upward or downward, um, if it's more um, slanted than it is or more steep, um, that all depends on, on the extra information, okay? And then the absolute value basically looks like this half of the graph, but then all these negatives turn positive. So then it goes upward in the other direction. Square root of X, we just graphed. We talked about how it has the 0 0.00 and it goes this way. And we just talked about how you would graph an X squared function, an X cubed function, and a one over X function. But these are the basic shapes, okay? The parabola is the word that they use here. Um, I've seen this, um, people call it a chair, right? This little curved um, thing here. But it basically looks like half of a parabola facing downward and then the other half of the parabola facing upward. That's what I see when I look at an X cubed, okay? Um, and then one over X is a little interesting because it doesn't ever cross this Y axis or this X axis. So it just goes up forever and then over there forever. And then the same thing over here. Now remember, you gotta get positives, right? So you got positives and positives and the negatives and negatives do make positives. So that's the other side. Um, familiar, familiarity, I can't say that word, <laughs> with the basic characteristics of these simple graphs will help you to analyze the shapes of more complicated graphs. In particular, graphs obtained from these graphs by the rigid and non-rigid transformations. Now, We're gonna start getting into, before we get into those transformations, we're gonna talk about piecewise defined functions. So piecewise defined functions are a function whose domain is divided into parts and each part is defined by a different function rule, okay? And normally, I think in the past, they had us evaluate a piece defined function for certain X values, but this time they're asking me to graph this piecewise function. Okay, and so that's different than before. Now I will tell you, I'm gonna to explain to you the technique on how you graph, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna create two tables. You're gonna create one table for one function, and then you're gonna create another table for the other function. Okay, now you have to include the number that's on the bounce, okay? You don't have a choice, you have to include that number. So I'm gonna have a negative six. However, negative six is part of the bounds. So I need to decide, is this gonna have an open dot or a closed dot? Now, because of the bar, it's going to have a closed dot, okay? And then I'm gonna pick X values that are less than negative six. So negative seven, negative eight, and so forth. And these guys would just get regular little points. So they're kind of like this one, but not so big and making a point that it's solid, right? These are just gonna have regular points. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug them each into that top function. So negative six plus two is negative four, negative seven plus two is negative five, and negative eight plus two is negative um, six. And so I'm not gonna keep going, although this does go forever in the left direction, okay? So I'm just gonna graph what I've got so far. And I'm gonna use this line as my um, x-axis. So I've got negative one, two, three, four, five, six, and one, two, three, four. So about right here, and it's gonna be a big, bold, solid dot then negative seven and negative five, which would be here, regular dot, and then negative eight and negative six, which would be about here. Now I could keep going, but you can already see that these are gonna go in this um, direction, okay? Because I can only pick numbers that are less than negative six, which means this will just keep going downward and downward. Now, over here, I do have to include the six, and then I wanna pick X values that are greater than six. So like seven and eight. However, on the six, because there's no bar, this is gonna have an open dot, okay? And so then I'm gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven and eight. Now, when I plug in six, I'm gonna have one half of six minus four, 
which is three minus four, which is negative one. One half of seven minus four is 3.5 minus four, which is negative half. And then one half of eight minus four equals four minus four, which is zero. So if I go to six and negative one, I'm here, but with an open dot. Then seven and negative 0.5 would be a regular dot. And eight and zero would also be a regular dot. Now I can keep plugging in numbers greater than six, but they'll still be going in this direction, okay? And so then I have the other half of the graph. Now there is apparently a gap in between, and that's because there's a gap between the X values. These X values stopped at negative six, and these didn't begin until positive six. But this would be the graph of this function. And that is the end of 2.4A. Um,